Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Around the ECHL, the Allen Americans and the Utah Grizzlies coming up tonight. So why not have the voice of the Utah Grizzlies on with us for a second time here in the last few weeks, the great Tyson Whiting joining us. So I'm assuming is that your office or are you actually at home? It's in the office. You know, it's just a normal Tuesday work day. Uh, but at the end of it, we're going to have a hockey game and I'm going to be right here in this office. I'm going to pretend like I'm in some sort of undisclosed location just to kind of enhance the experience a little bit. But uh, you know, we're going to have a pretty good game tonight, I think. I I agree. Uh, you know, fun series in, in Utah, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, some pretty tight games in there, as a matter of fact. And uh, you kind of started our little losing ways. Uh, we've gone, uh, we've lost three out of four now and two in a row. Uh, to a pretty good Wichita team over the weekend. But uh, let's talk about, first of all, broadcasting remotely. Do you do the games from your office or do you do them from home? I do them from the office, uh, you know, at home. I'm not, I don't necessarily trust my internet connection at home very often. So I go to the office and even though the internet connection isn't always great here, it, it's usually good enough to at least be able to get a good picture and be able to describe something off of it. Absolutely. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a good one for you to call tonight. You know, you guys also, uh, like us were affected by players going up to the American hockey league, just kind of take us through how much your team has changed over the last month and a half. Well, about the time AHL camp started uh, around Martin Luther King day, the Grizzlies lost five players to, uh, the AHL in their camps, you know, two defensemen, Matt Apt and Ian Scheid. For Charlie Girard, who looks like he's going to be a heck of a hockey player, a rookie out of Minnesota State Mankato, and then two goaltenders, Parker Gahagan and uh, Peyton Jones. And Jones right now is actually the uh, taxi goaltender for the Colorado Avalanche because they've had some injuries. And, and so lost those five guys. And then just yesterday, lost Riley Woods and Miles Gendron. Uh, Gendron, a defenseman that had two goals uh, last Saturday in a Grizzlies 3-2 victory over Kansas City. And then Riley Woods, uh, you know, he's just been unbelievable for the Grizzlies in eight games. He's a point and seven out of the eight. And, uh, you know, he's got four multiple point games. So, you know, Riley jo Riley Woods has been somebody that has showed up, played for Man Newfoundland last year and has done a great job and, uh, quite frankly, has earned a call up to the AHL, even though the uh, Colorado Eagles, you know, their first game is the, coming up this Saturday. Um, and Riley Woods really has played well enough to have earned a spot. You kind of get the feeling, Tyson, it's going to be one of those years where everybody's in the mix because, you know, I mean, you lose four or five of your good players. I know we went through that, too, with, you know, San Jose and Minnesota and losing uh, C.J. Mott, who went up to Bridgeport. So, you know, we had to completely, uh, you know, kind of reinvent the wheel here, find two goalies, uh, bring a couple other players in, some some guys we're coming off injury like uh, Braylon Schmier is able to come back in and find a spot in the lineup, but you kind of get the feeling because of what's going on in the American hockey league. It, it might be the team that, that has the, uh, the best game plan of finding guys out there on the waiver wire to bring in because you lose players. Yeah. You, you lose players and really you lose players. You probably didn't think that you were going to lose when you signed them, you know, you signed them and they end up playing great and ended up earning a spot in the AHL and, Really, that's where, you know, goaltending depth is going to be big this year because you just never know when you're going to need your third or fourth goaltender to come in and, and play a few games. And it also really speaks to, you know, the character within the team. You know, you're going to need a good group of players that are going to be there all year to help, you know, the, to kind of keep things afloat, you know, and really uh, kind of keep the mentality of the team and the culture of the team to where it's a positive, despite the fact that, you know, every year you're in this year probably be more so than others you're gonna have so many roster moves and that's really where the Grizzlies over the last four or five games have uh, found a mix where they've gotten great goaltending play from Brad Barone you know a guy who started the year as the third goaltender and really has played his way into the number one spot and has done nothing to say that in the future he won't be the number one goaltender for the Grizzlies he's been outstanding in five games with a 931 save percentage which is second best in the league and it also comes to guys that you know players that were on the third line maybe they they move up to the second line and in some cases maybe move up to that first line. And, you know, you just have to find a way to, for guys to step up. And uh, for some players, you know, maybe have, have been overlooked, you know, they end up getting signed and it's a great opportunity for them to show what they can do. What were your impressions of the Allen lineup uh, when you saw us a few weeks ago in, in Utah? Um, like I said, it's always fun series against you guys. And 
uh, it always seems to get a little bit chippy, uh, even though, uh, you know, our, our biggest rival definitely has been Utah, excuse me, uh, Wichita over the years. But it seems that there's been a little kind of back and forth every time we play you guys, uh, you know, with uh, with the gloves being dropped. And we had a couple of a uh, couple of pretty good fights in, in the games on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, those series always end up being physical. Uh, really, the thing about Allen that impresses me is the defensive core. You know, Les Lancaster and really, it seems like over the years, Turner Rottenbride, who played well for the Grizzlies a couple years ago, you know, he's had himself an outstanding year. He's a plus six this year. And uh, really, the big thing with Allen, it seems like year in and year out, it's just three really good forward lines, you know, and that's that's the big thing is, you know, some nights your top line is going to beat the opposing team's top line, but other times it's going to be, you know, and really, I think Allen probably has won a lot of games because their third line beat the other th- team's third line. And I thought the signing of Colby McCauley was certainly big for uh, for Allen. He had a really good year with Idaho last year. You know, Des- Jesse Mychan and uh, really the, the constant seems like year in and year out of Spencer Asichuk. And so really, when you look at Allen, you look down the roster, any given night, any one of those guys come up with a big goal. And that's really uh, the thing that has impressed me about Allen is kind of the depth within the roster to where, Hey, any given night, anybody in that third line, I mean, it seemed like Dyson Stevenson had a pretty good series. And uh, Zane Franklin, you know, was pretty active against the Grizzlies earlier, earlier this year. And maybe one guy I was impressed with was Josh Lamont, who seemed to have a good series over at Maverick Center a couple weeks ago. So uh, that's the big thing with Allen is, is just the depth within the roster. And, and I particularly have been impressed with the, the defenseman this year. Well, and the one thing you'll probably see, and that was uh, pretty much a constant uh, in Utah, was – the uh, Stevenson Laburge combination up against your top line. Those are uh, two of our top defensive forwards. And I think Lamond was playing with them uh, for a little bit. He's moved on to a different line now, but uh, those two guys seem to be, you know, our best shutdown line. Uh, so I would imagine you'll probably see more of that tonight. Yeah, I think so. Uh, one guy's played well with, with, against the Grizzlies over the last few years has been Connor Bleakley. I know when he was with Tulsa, he gave the Grizzlies a lot of fits and he's a plus 10 this year. And so I think he, he's going to be big. Uh, LaBerge uh, was somebody that, you know, really contributed against the Grizzlies. But that's part of what has made Allen such a good team. And that's partly why, you know, last year they were in first place when the season shut down is the fact that it just seems like on any given night it, it can be anybody. You know, and that, I think that's one of the fun things about hockey is that, you know, on any given night you, you don't know who's going to end up being the hero. And I think that's partly why both Allen and Utah have been teams that year in and year out you'll see in the postseason because it's not just a, a lineup relying on a few guys. Uh, we played Kansas City last weekend, and uh, they got a, a great top line. I mean, Brody Reed and Giorgio Estefan are the top two scorers in the league this year. Um, so, you know, Kansas City has, has been in the mix, you know, because their top line, quite frankly, dominated the two games against the Grizzlies. And so it's – it's a little bit different to, in that with Allen and Utah, it's a little bit more of a balanced attack. Obviously, a few guys, you know, right there at the top of the roster, um, controlling the scoring. You know, for for Utah, it's Pat Canone and Matthew Boucher, and for Allen, you know, it's a few guys like Corey Mackin, who's got 19 points already this year and in, in just 19 games. So I think that that's partly why it's always fun when Allen plays Utah because you know it's just it's two deep rosters. We got to get your thoughts on the uh, the playoffs, and and they announced the the playoff uh, format with, you know, obviously as we expected, the top four teams in each of the conferences getting, uh, you know, a, a play into the the postseason. But what do you think about the opportunity there for the higher seeds to pick whether they'd play the first two games on the road or get three at home? I like it. It's good strategy. And I almost wonder if you're the top seed and you've had a pretty good road record, do you think, okay, we could potentially get, you know, three home games, games three through five, or if you're a team that's struggled on the road, you know, do you think, okay, let's win the first two home games. Then all we got to do is go on the road and win one out of the three. And so uh, the strategy is, is interesting, especially, you know, when from team to team, who knows, you know, really what's going to be best for them. And so I think, I think that's part of the intrigue of it. And maybe part another part is arena availability, you know, is, is a team that, you know, finishes first or second in the conference. So they're going to have to, you know, be there you know, with their hands be tied based on whether their arena is available. And so I, I think it'll be interesting to see come playoff time, how that comes about and you really, what kind of an advantage that does have for the team with a better record. All right. Final thing for you. What are the keys to the Utah Grizzlies getting a win tonight in Allen? What do they have to do? 
got to continue to be good on the power play. Um, the Grizzlies have seven power play goals in their last five games. Right now, they're the number one power play unit in the league. And a big factor of that has been Pat Canone, who's uh, got three goals and five assists on the power play this year. He really controls things, and he's a, a dynamic passer who seems to always find the open guy. You know, Cedric Pare has been pretty good on the power play. You know, losing Riley Woods is certainly going to hurt in that department, but I think for the Grizzlies, it's going to be big to pick up a power play goal or two in tonight's game. And even though the penalty kill overall, you know, the numbers are down a little bit this year, but the last four or five games, the penalty kill has also gotten the job done. So I think for the Grizzlies tonight, they got to find a way to, to win that special teams battle if they want to come away with two points over an Allen. You mentioned uh, the last thing for here. You mentioned Zane Franklin earlier. You might not recognize him on the ice tonight. He is one of two guys that had some pretty colorful beards. Well, not any longer. He was on the ice this morning for pregame warmups, clean shaven. So my guess is he lost some sort of a Super Bowl bet. Uh, I haven't confirmed that with him yet, but that's just a guess. Uh, but he's going to look much, much younger. He went from looking like a early twenties. You know, pretty tough, rugged, uh, you know, of course, he leads our team in pimps anyway, but to a almost looks like a little 14, 15 year old kid that's just just getting ready to go to juniors. But lovable. He is one of the most popular guys in the room. I uh, just wanted to let you know tonight, if you're looking for the bearded guy in the jersey number 44. No, we didn't trade him. He just looks much younger. That's always the thing. A guy shaves and all of a sudden you're trying to figure out who it is on the ice because one of the things you can tell is, okay, you distinguish them from another player is he's the guy with the beard. You know, I, I yeah. know with Idaho for a couple of years, it was always Colton Sauce. Remember that, that huge yeah. beard? You know, it's like you just – you didn't even have to look at the jersey number. You knew it was him. Absolutely. Well, Tyson, have a great call tonight. Uh, thanks as always, buddy. Enjoyed being there with you uh, in Utah a couple of weeks ago and, and your, your buddy – uh, Tim Broussard, who is one of the best photographers in this league. And I know he, I always hear him doing his uh, little recap with you at the end. Uh, great host and have a great one tonight. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good, Tommy. Hopefully it'll be a good game here on a, a random Tuesday. Random Tuesday it is. Not many Tuesday games in Allen American City, at least in our building. As we go around the ECHL every Tuesday, this time with the voice of your Utah Grizzlies, the one and only Tyson Whiting.